Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today we'll be looking at the EI Asset Talent Search Examination and we're looking at the Grade 9 EI Asset Talent Search Examination, some sample questions uh, with solution. This is the first episode. So let's begin. So this will be on science. First question. Substances can be classified as elements, compounds and mixtures. Shown below are four substances. Each circle represents an atom. Which of them is a single compound? Now in the question we are given three terms. Elements, compounds and mixtures. Let's define them. Elements are defined uh, or rather made up of substances which are made up of one type of atom uh, compounds are made up of more than one type of atom which are bonded chemically so bonded chemically and mixtures if you talk about mixtures they are a combination of two or more substances. Uh, they could be elements or compounds, and which they are not chemically combined, combined, but rather, and also each of these substances have their own properties. For example, if we have a mixture of A and B, uh, it would show the properties of both the element, element or the substance A and substance B. Now the question says shown below are four substances. Each circle represents an atom, which of them is a single compound. Now we look at option A, it's made up of one atom. So here one atom, the same atom is being repeated. Now if we look at the definition, uh, we can see that this uh, type would match with element. An element is made up of one type of atom. Option A is made up of one type of atom. So option A is an element. It's not a single compound. So option A is incorrect. Now if we look at option B, it says that uh, it has one, let's say this uh, A, the gray one as B and that is a colored gradient one as C. Then we have an ABB, ABB and ACC. Now the question is asking for a single compound. A compound is one which is made up of more than one type of atom. So a single compound is made up of just one type of compound in a container. If a container has only uh, H2O, then that's a single compound, only water, H2O. Now, but in option B, it says, uh, we can see that even though both of these are one compound, means one made one type of compound, there's also an extra AC ACC compound which so this uh, option B is not a single compound but rather made up of more than one compounds the so option B is also incorrect if we, look, if we look at option D we can see that it is randomly scattered each of the atoms are randomly scattered for example if we, we have this and this and then we have another atom the, another atom and I also have another compound so this most definitely is a mixture and is cannot be defined as a single compound. So option D is also incorrect. The correct option is option C. In this, if you look at one compound, means one chemically bonded substance, we have one big white circle, uh, two small gray circles, and one uh, gradient circle. And it is the same for all of the chemically, chemically bonded substances in the container. So we can thus say that this is a single compound and so option C is the right answer for this question. Next question. In the relation capital F is equal to capital G capital M M by R square the quantity G represents I mean not represents but what are the qualities of quantity G A depends on the value of G at the place of observation is B is used only when the earth is one of the two masses C is greatest at the surface of the earth and d is universal constant of nature now this formula is the the universal law of gravitation derived from the universal law of gravitation which states that 
the gravitational force between two objects is directly proportional to the product of their masses and indirectly proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. So for example, if we have one object uh, and another two objects, then the, uh, the first object has uppercase M as its mass and the second object has lowercase m as, it ma as its mass and r is the distance between their centers this is r then uh, uh, you can say that f is directly proportional to the product of these m and uh, capital m and small letter m and it's indirectly proportional to the square of r now uh, if we combine both of them we can we can get that f is directly proportional to mm by r squared and from there we got the constant g in order to remove this uh, directly proportional sign we added a constant g and then we got the equation f is equal to g mm by r squared so with this information let's look at the options option a says that it depends on the value of small g at the place of observation however g is just a constant that is uh, given with a universal constant which is given to uh, remove the directly proportional, slightly proportional sign. So option A is incorrect. Option B says it is used only when the earth is one of the two masses. Now this is also incorrect because uh, the two objects could be any uh, two objects in the universe and uh, this formula can be used to calculate the gravity, gravitational force between any two objects in the universe. So it is, it can be, Earth can be one of the two masses, but it's not necessary. So option B is incorrect. Now option C says is greatest at the surface of the Earth. Now this is also incorrect. This is a quality of the small letter G, which is the uh, force of gravity that an, an object which acts on an object on Earth. And so this is not one of the qualities of capital G. Option D is the correct option which says uh, it is the universal constant of nature. So this capital G is the same throughout the universe and that's why it's called a universal constant of gravitation. So that's why option D is universal constant of nature is the correct option in this question. Next question. When viewed under a compound microscope, which cell organelles in a temporary mount of onion peel can be seen clearly? And we have some combinations of cell organelles. Option A says cell wall cytoplasm nucleolus vacuole chloroplast, cell wall cytoplasm nucleus vacuole plasma membrane, cell wall cytoplasm nucleolus lysosome and chloroplast, and B. Option D, cell wall, cytoplasm, nucleolus, vacuole, and chloroplast and mitochondria. Now, uh, this one asks us, which cell organelle can be seen clearly when put on a temporary mount of onion peel under a compound microscope? Now, let's look at option A. A cell wall can be seen clearly because it is the base, it's ma made up of cellulose and so can be seen clearly cytoplasm can also be seen clearly as it is the place in which all the other organ organelles are present cytoplasm also can be seen clearly however the nucleolus cannot be seen clearly when put under a temporary amount of onion peel this is because in order to see the nucleolus the nucleolus is uh, inside the nucleus we need uh, an increased magnification more magnification and also we need to stain uh, the cell then only the nucleolus will be visible uh, or clearly visible so with that we can cancel option a now if we look at the option c and d we can see they also have nucleolus as one of its cell organelles so with that we can just cross cancel c and d a c d and we are left with option b as the correct answer cell wall cytoplasm nucleus vacuole and plasma membrane these cells i mean these cell organelles can all be seen clearly when put under a temporary amount of onion peel when put when a temporary amount of onion peel is put under a compound microscope 
So option B is the correct option. Next question. A heavy ball is suspended as shown. A quick jerk on the lower string will break that string. But a slow pull on the lower string will break the upper string. The first result occurs because a. The force is too small to move the ball. B. Action and reaction is operating. C. The ball has inertia. And D. Air friction holds the ball back. Now, we have to explain why a quick jerk on the lower string will break the lower string. Now, a quick jerk, so if we pull this lower string down very fast, we, we can see that it would break off. But why? Now, this can be uh, explained with Newton's first law of motion, which states that an object uh, has a tendency, an object which is at rest or in uniform motion tends to stay at rest or uniform motion unless compelled to change by an unbalanced external force. So, what's uh, in this situation, we can apply it as this ball would tend to stay in its uh, state of rest uh, so that's why when we pull this lower string since the heavy ball tends to uh, stay at rest it would stay at rest so the lower string would move but the ball would not and with that the lower string would get detached from the heavy ball and thus breaking the lower string now this first law of motion is also uh, termed as the law of inertia. Now with this information let's look at the options. Option A says the force is too small to move the ball. However a quick jerk means we are applying more force. I mean uh, it is applied more faster. The force does not matter. So option A is incorrect which says that the force is too small to move the ball. Option B is the action and reaction is operating. However, the fact that action and reaction is operating is not why the lower string is broken. So option B is also incorrect. Option D says air friction holds the ball back. Now this is also incorrect as we just saw that it's because of inertia and not because of air friction. So option C, the ball has inertia, is the correct answer for this question. Because the ball has inertia, it tends to stay at rest and so would stay at rest, breaking the lower string off. So C, option C is the correct option. Now next final question, which of the following are homogeneous in nature? And we have four substances, ice, wood, soil, air. And we have four options with a combination of two of these any two of these so we need to find which of these are homogeneous now what is homogeneous now homogeneous substance is substance in which uh, when its components are present in same proportions like same proportions throughout the substance throughout uh, a substance but uh, this is specific to a given sample for example if we have one box let's say one box and we cut open this part and this part let's say both of them are of equal volume then if it's a homogeneous if it's homogeneous then both of them both of them would have the same composition the same proportions that uh, substances which make up this uh, substance, the, the small substances which make up this big substance would be present in uh, same proportions in both of these cases. So let's see the four substances which are given to us. One, ice. Now ice is basically solidified water and we know that water is a compound. Now in a compound, a compound is present in equal ratios, equal proportions throughout the universe. And so if we are given a given sample of ice, it would also have the same proportion. Now he, look, the question is also not asking us for a homogeneous mixture. It's, it's just asking us which of the following are homogeneous in nature. So we can include compounds as homogeneous in nature. 
So one ice is correct. Now if we look at two, if we look at two, wood. Now let's take a block of wood. If we compare a block of wood, and let's say the amount of wood in this area, the amount of wood in this area. Now the amount would be equal because the volume is equal, but wood is consist uh, consisted of many other smaller things. Now this is not present in the same ratio in both of these cases. If you look at over here, the uh, let's say it's made up of A and B. Here A would be seventy percent, thirty percent. Here uh, A can be A could be at fifty fifty or any other ratio. So we cannot say that the wood is homogeneous in nature because its constituents are not present in same proportions. So option two is incorrect. Now option three says soil. Now soil is a mass of decaying matter made up of microorganisms and other nutrients. Now, so if we take two segments of the soil, this segment of the soil and this segment of the soil, we can see that it would be consisting of different amount of uh, different amount of substances. So the amount of microbes, the ratio of microbes to the others in this part would not be the same as the ratio of microbes in this part. So we cannot say that the soil is homogeneous in nature. So three is incorrect. Now air, air is basically the, uh, the atmosphere. Now in earth, we know that the, uh, the gases in the atmosphere are present in uh, equal ratios. Nitrogen is present in 75%, uh, etc. So that's why we can say that air, uh, the gases present in air, uh, gases are present in same proportion. So option for air could be, is, is considered as homogeneous in nature. So we have one ice and four air. If we look at options, we look at the options. Option C says one and four. So option C is the correct option. A, B, D is incorrect. So uh, that was the last question. With that, we end this video. We hope you found it interesting and informative. For more of such videos, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios. Until the next episode, take care, stay safe. Ta-ta for now.